You are listening to The New Man, Beyond the Macho Jerk and the New Age Wimp. Your host is men's coach, Trip Lemire. What does it mean to be dangerous? How can we ensure we don't become grumpy, soft, and fragile old men? And could what you're about to hear be the worst, most disgusting way to open a book? Today, I want to share an excerpt from my new book, This Book Will Make You Dangerous. This is the introduction where we take a very unconventional look at expectations and ask the question, is the pursuit of success making us weak? When you open up a book about the big, serious topic of transforming our lives, relationships, and professions, you probably expect a quote from one of the great wisdom teachers of the past, maybe Rumi, Joseph Campbell, or one of those stoic guys whose name looks like a little kid dropped his alphabet blocks on the floor. This is how the author sets the right tone and proves he's got some depth and he should be taken seriously. But that's not how we're going to start this book. Instead, I'm going to tell you about the time some guy stuck his hand in my bum. Buckle up. Here we go. One day, I go to the doctor because I have some weird pain in my butt. And as I walk in the office, I see a beautiful nurse. Wow, I think. She is stunning. And then my vanity kicks in. Oh, man. I sure hope she doesn't have to see me with my pants down. Eventually, I find myself in the privacy of that fluorescently lit tomb called an examination room, sitting on the table with that crinkly paper and all those anatomy diagrams on the wall. The doc comes in. We talk about my situation, and with a bored drawl, he says, All right, I'll be right back. Door closes, tension builds, long exhale, shaky leg. 30 seconds later, he walks back in with Nurse Stunning. Shit. Doc says, Okay, Mr. Lanier, please take down your pants, and let's have you bend over against the table. As I face the wall, I hear the gloves going on. I hear the bottle of lube fart out a bubble as he smears it onto his hand. Shit. I'm aware that this isn't going to be an afternoon at the spa, so I appreciate that he doesn't give me the customary You might feel a slight discomfort song and dance. That said, I'm still caught off guard when Dr. Big Mitt jams his way into my rear end. Holy hell. I involuntarily let out a, a little howl which sounds like a sad puppy. As sweat begins to beat on my forehead, my vanity kicks in again. I wonder if the nurse heard it. Of course she heard it. The doc is digging around my caboose as if he's lost his car keys, and just when I think he's finished, he decides to, in my best guesstimation, see if he can touch my tonsils. And that's when I hear his frustrated voice over my strained breathing. Um, when was the last time you had a bowel movement? (sighs) A few hours ago. Well, there's still stool in here. Shit. Doc, you chose this profession. You had to know that if you were going to play Roto-Rooter in people's asses for a living, that you'd also encounter a poo on deck from time to time. That poo's in the right place. Your hand is not. I mean, how many years of medical school did you go through? Because I didn't go through any, and I can tell you with great confidence that you're probably going to find a poo if you're digging around someone's butt. Jeez, man. What the hell were you expecting? Okay, I don't actually say any of that, but I am struck by the fact that he seemed so disappointed to find a surprise behind door number two. What was he expecting? So let's start there. Let's connect the dots between this questionable way to open a book and creating the lives we truly want. Let's talk about expectations. What if success isn't the same as strength? I love having nice things. I love feeling comfortable and secure, and I'd be lying if I didn't admit that I also love feeling like I'm somebody special. I invite you to come clean and admit that you like some version of these things too. Because as we're going to explore further in this book, it's natural, it's who we are. It's why we place so much importance upon being, quote, successful, whatever that may mean to you. As a professional coach, someone who spent many years working directly with people to create the lives and relationships and businesses they truly want. I spend my days talking to extraordinary men all around the world. I'm talking about everyone from founders who have bootstrapped companies and sold them for millions to executives who have shaped the technology we use every day to Navy SEALs who have experienced and survived the unimaginable. As their coach, 
I get to see behind these impressive displays. I get to see that many of these guys are actually quite confused. Even though they've got money and comfort and a sense of importance, because of their mindset, success isn't quite what they expected it to be. And that's because whether they're aware of it or not, they often have an expectation that success on its own would mean they would be set. They had an expectation that success on its own would shield them from the pain in the ass that is life. They had an expectation that success on its own would bring lasting fulfillment. For years, they sacrificed and deprived themselves of so much in order to achieve so much, only to find that they still felt perpetually stuck in a cycle of same shit, different day. Even though they had jumped through hoops and accomplished what they set out to do, life was still a chronic pain in the ass. All of this left them feeling a lot like that doctor staring at his glove. What the hell is this shit? This is why I throw most of the success how-to books I receive right into the trash. As the host of The New Man, a men's personal growth podcast that's been running for over a decade and has millions of downloads, I get submissions for new interviews every day. But unfortunately, many of these well-meaning authors and quote experts are really just trying to help us get better at playing a game we can't win. It's a game built upon this false expectation that if we just have more money, attention, information, productivity, technology, abs, influence, spirituality you name it, then we'll be set for life. It's a false hope that conditions us to believe that the answer to our problems and challenges and dissatisfaction is more stuff that we don't really need. But very few of us understand that it's this never-ending striving for more that keeps us on the hamster wheel. It's this herd mentality, the comparisons to others and fear of missing out that distracts us from what's most important. It doesn't matter if you're a corporate executive, a startup founder, or just a guy running his own freelance gig from the kitchen table. We can create a rat race out of any given situation. It doesn't matter what tax bracket or neighborhood we live in, no one is immune. And it's this mindset that is making us weak. Think about it. How often do we use success to justify doing things that literally make us weak? The missed workouts, the lack of sleep, the lousy food choices, the lack of personal time, the lack of play, the withering relationships, the tolerating of assholes and ass kissers and adversaries, the crowded, polluted living areas with astronomical costs of living. How often do we ask ourselves, is the stuff I'm doing to be successful really making me stronger? Is this deprivation aligned with what I truly want? The reality is we can't just blindly follow this stinky expectation that scaling or hustling or adding a zero to our net worth will create the deep satisfaction and fulfillment we truly want. And I've spent enough time meditating with so-called spiritual masters to know that we don't have to sell all of our stuff or shave our heads and change our name to that of some yoga pose in order to experience greater fulfillment either. The good news is that in this book, I'm going to share the lessons I've learned from spending years down in the trenches. I'm going to share what has actually helped people to break out of this rat racer pattern to create success on their own terms. I'm going to share much of what I've learned through personal experience, from interviewing hundreds of folks who dedicate their lives to this conversation, from reading gazillions of books, and from being coached by some of the most insightful men and women who guide folks to forge their own paths. Forging our own path. This is the foundation of being, quote, dangerous, not because it will necessarily put us in harm's way. In fact, as we'll learn, it helps us stay out of traps, but it does require us to create our lives in a way that most just can't comprehend because they're so committed to playing it safe, even when it exhausts them and limits them and makes them weaker as a result. Here's what I mean. Instead of whipping ourselves with fear, pressure, or scarcity for motivation, we're going to learn how to identify the bullshit conditioning that keeps us chasing after a magical expectation. Instead of being distracted by comparisons, pissing matches, and the fear of missing out, we're going to practice tapping into our own sense of authority for direction. Instead of feeling stuck in a rut, we're going to develop what has us feel more expansive and free. Instead of tolerating a groundhog day existence of same shit, different day, we're going to create small experiments and identify what makes us feel alive. And instead of hoping we can find relief if we just outrun our problems, we'll cultivate the deep sense of peace that comes from knowing we can handle whatever comes our way. 
We're going to expect resistance and procrastination to show up. So we'll also practice some basic ways to turn our excuses and anxiety into action. And then we'll also practice an ancient skill that most have forgotten so that we can be fast on our feet and solve problems and bounce back after a fall. Bottom line, we're going to ditch the unconscious expectations and patterns that make us weak. We'll learn how to align our actions with the version of success that makes us truly strong. We'll create greater alignment with what makes us stronger today instead of when or if we cross some fantasy rat race or finish line. And as long as we don't take ourselves too seriously, it'll even be fun. Now, let's be clear. This process is not for everyone. As I said before, all of this is going to seem dangerous to those who are unwilling to challenge the unconscious motivations and expectations that drive their choices. A couple of things to consider before we dive in. First, you may have noticed a word that popped up a lot in that list, practice. There's a reason why I'm not crazy about most of the personal and business development books out there. And that's because in their efforts to be very polished and groomed and homogenized and catchy and sellable, they fuel an expectation that growth is a linear, predictable, step-by-step process like building a Lego castle. They often give folks the impression that lasting growth and change is really just boiled down to knowledge, to understanding a few simple ideas. This belief leads many folks to think that devouring information through books and podcasts is the same thing as doing the work, but it's not. Unlike those who peddle false hope from the safety of their computer keyboard, as a coach, I'm in the trenches working with real people going through real transformation. Information is just one small part of the process. While new ideas and information are important, nothing compares to what happens when we roll up our sleeves and do smart work. Without implementation, information just becomes entertainment. So as you read this book, I want you to practice this stuff. I want you to use these ideas as a springboard to get into action. I want you to experiment, to get dirty playing on the field of your life. So here's the suggestion. Don't believe a single word you read until you test it for yourself. Please keep whatever works for you and then ditch whatever doesn't. I'd rather you reject these ideas after experimentation instead of parroting them just because they sound good. And second, I'm not going to pretend to be some guru, some guy on a pedestal who has all the answers. I'm not going to lie and say that I'm somehow immune to the ups and downs of life. Any guy who tells you otherwise is, he's full of shit. There's a reason why I still hire coaches and study and practice, and it's because I'm still figuring this stuff out too. Life is an unfolding series of challenges, and I want to be clear that there's no promise of a finish line here. Consider that I'm in this process with you, shoulder to shoulder. Instead of mimicking what some blowhard on a stage has to say, this book is an invitation to tap into our inner authority, that awareness of what makes us strong, and then forge our own unique paths together. It's through this process that we align our actions with what really matters and what really works. So with that said, If our choices are driving so many of us to run the rat race, then let's start by taking a hard look at what motivates those choices. And we can do this by shining a big bright light on the romantic, magical fascination folks have with the idea of purpose. I hope you've enjoyed this excerpt from my new book, This Book Will Make You Dangerous. If you'd like to learn more about the book, then just visit DangerousBookstore.com. Thanks for listening.